just so you know what's going on here, I, uh, these people did not come to my office, so you can just... They did not, they did not walk through the door. Sorry. Um, but uh, I, I was listening to a radio show... Uh, Two weeks ago, you guys were on the... I have no idea where you were even there. Um, <laughs> listened to a radio show, and, and, and it piqued my curiosity, and I looked up about them. Um, it's a group called The Geek Group, which you have paperwork on. Um, and I have to tell you, it, it brought back a whole bunch of memories of me being in the Navy. And when I was in the Navy on shore base, they would have a, a garage where you could do whatever you wanted to do with your cars. They had all the tools you ever wanted, you just had to check them out. And I said, wow, this is very similar uh, to that. So I figured, but it's, it's way techier. So I thought that I would uh, get them in here to talk ab about uh, their, their <coughs> geek group and uh, to let you know what's going on uh, and what's available to you if you're a tinkerer or to people you know that are tinkerers. So uh, if you would help me welcome Chris Bowden. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Chris Bowden. I'm the president and founder of the Geek Group National Science Center. And the cool thing is, I, I do this a lot, and I like audiences like this because I walk in here and all of you just get it. Because this is, this is a lot easier than my normal talk. How many people in here have toolbox, socket set, basic hand tool stuff? Raise your hand. Cool. Exactly. You are the generation that builds things. <laughs> the problem is in the current generation they don't. They push buttons and shop classes are a dying breed. What we are is in the old West Side YMCA down on Leonard, 43,000 square foot building. And inside that is every workshop, every tool, every lab you can possibly imagine. Because right now there isn't a person around this table who can't change your own oil. But doing that outside, in your driveway, in February, even when it's 40 degrees in February, is not a fun time. So what you do is you bring your car to our shop, and you do the work. We have a hoist. We have every tool you could possibly imagine. We have more tools in stock in our building than Home Depot. And you can wow. use all of them. And this isn't like, oh, hey, you can use a screwdriver and stuff. We have quarter million dollar CNC machines, we have a million dollar robot, we have a full electronics lab with over 300,000 parts. Remember when Radio Shack actually sold stuff that wasn't phones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like that. We have full welding, full metal shop, full wood shop with all the tools you could possibly need. Everything. We've got a chemistry lab. We even have a high voltage physics lab. We have a robotics lab. If you decide tomorrow that you want to come down and build a model airplane with your grandson, we have an RC aeronautics lab where you can build everything from rockets to airplanes to helicopters to quads and drones and all that jazz. The idea is really simple. When you guys were all kids, you had that guy on your street who had his garage door open all the time and you could go there and learn how to spin a wrench or tinker on a lawnmower or whatever. You learned how to build things, how to work with your hands. That's what we are for the world. That extends beyond just that, where we have a massive audio-video production facility where we take the crusty old farts and we team them up with the young kids because you guys have 40 years of learning things and I don't want that to just go away. It's really important to take the fundamental skills, the real world stuff, electricians, pipe fitters, plumbers, woodworkers, all that stuff, and get this into the next generation because we need to create the next generation to be able to actually do real work, and that's a big part of what we do. So we share that with about 12 million of our closest friends. We have members in over 160 countries worldwide. There's about 25,000 members, and in the theme of the world, last year membership in the Geek Group was $40 a month, and of course everything gets more expensive every year. This year membership is $20 a month. I'm very proud of that fact. Um, and the idea is access. It's, it's all about get off your butt, let's do something. Let's actually tangibly build something. Also, and I'm saying this in the state that ranked 50th dead last in accountability and transparency in our government, we very proudly are the most open, accountable, and transparent nonprofit organization that any of us has ever heard of. In fact, this talk that I'm giving right now is being videoed back there by the lovely Elizabeth. It will go out unedited on YouTube, and if any of you want to refer to it or anything like that, it's really easy to find. I'm all over Facebook and LinkedIn and all that jazz. I'm an easy guy to find, and you can just 
email info at thegeekgroup.org, which is in front of the packet that all of you have. So, yeah. And now it's where it gets really fun. Here's the other side to that. I want your junk. Because I've never met you before in my life. I don't know anything about you. Okay? But this is what I know. You have a socket set. And it's not your first. You bought a socket set a million years ago. And the first thing you did was... old. <laughs> sure. The first thing you did... I had a dinosaur again. <laughs> the first thing you did was you lost the 7 16 inch socket because that's the one you always lose first. Followed probably by the half inch. Over time, they get broken, parts fall off, sockets get lost, the neighbor kid stole one, whatever, and you had half a socket set rattling around the bottom of your toolbox. So you went out and you bought a shiny new one. But you didn't throw the old one away because you just don't do that. I want your junk, and I want all of your junk, because what we do is we collect all those old half, that half dozen rattling around, half rusted old sockets in the bottom of your drawer, the, the DeWalt saws all that you haven't touched in 15 years, the stuff like that, the old stuff, and all of you know companies and know people who own companies, and they cycle out tools and computers and stuff like this all the time. I want all the old junk tools that aren't getting used and aren't getting loved, because what I'll do is I'll take your half a socket set, his half a socket set, his half a socket set, and our file cabinet is that big, and it's filled with files down this side. This one is sockets, and we have quarter inch sockets this high, eight drawers, quarter inch sockets, three eighths, half inch, and then the big ones. And then we have files, because it's a file cabinet. And I put all those together, and we end up with enough sockets where everybody has the tools they need, and we can share them all, and in 10,000 sockets, we still don't have a 716, because that's just how it works. <laughs> this is true, it's the one I have to buy. I always have to buy 716 sockets. But that's what we do, is we take all this old stuff, and you guys get a tax write off for it, and we give it a loving home. Because I don't care if that drill motor was made in 1982. That's back when they knew how to build the damn things. I, you know, we'll give it love, we'll put a new cord on it, we'll fix the switch, we'll clean it up, we'll get rid of the rust, and I'll put it in his hands. Because that's... That's what matters. That's my whole world, is I want him to be an engineer. So that's what I do. And now the fun part. There are no rules to this at all. I, I swear to God I've gotten boxes or briefs. You get to ask absolutely anything you want, and you get to do it with me on camera. So what do you want to know? Go. Why? Why did you do this? Because he's going to vote someday. And... It matters to me that if you learn the concept that the people that invented this aren't gods, you could be the guy that built this. And if you get over that fear of, I have an idea, and everybody does, you've all done this, you've all had some really cool idea for, you know, why the hell don't they make that? And then a year later you see some guy selling them on TV. And the only reason he's making a million dollars on the idea and you're not is because it's really, really hard to go from something in your head to something in your hand. If you want to build a factory and make a million of something, that's easy. There's a million organizations in town that will help you do it. But if you want to actually make the first half dozen, that's hard. Going from art to part, from concept to creation, is a nightmare for most people. Because you're a smart woman. But if I put you in a metal shop, you do not know how to MIG weld, do you? But you can. You just haven't gotten around to learning it yet. So if you came up with a really cool idea tomorrow that, that requires MIG welding, you well, that's a great idea, but I'm sorry. No, man, let's go. Let's build stuff. Because you can. And, and I can teach you how to program robots. And it's not hard. It's just, let's get off our butt and go. And it doesn't matter if you're black or white or straight or gay or, or young or old. We got kids in our place that are your age. And I got lots of them. And they're awesome. And it's just, let's go build stuff. That's, that's the why. Because if I do this, people get over themselves. And they get over that fear of, well, I can't do that. I don't know anything about woodworking or metal work. I'm just an accountant. And that kills me. Because if we get people to do this, we get people to practice critical thinking and logic and reason, and that makes them smarter people. And you guys get together with a mission of helping people, with solving problems. Think about this. Right now, think about any fundamental major problem in the world. Famine, disease, AIDS, pestilence, hunger, whatever. Any problem. They all have 
the same cause. All of them, every major problem in the world has the same cause, and they all have the same solution. Climate change, anyone. Stupid people make bad decisions, and those actions have consequences. And we don't teach this anymore. We live in a world where everybody gets a medal just for showing up. Easy. <laughs> it's true. That's my job. <laughs> so my job isn't to teach you how to build rockets and robots. My job is to teach you that critical thinking works, to teach you that it's okay to get off your butt and make mistakes and screw things up and try new things and learn and grow and the world gets a better place because you become smarter. And if you become smarter, you make better decisions. And if you make better decisions, those actions have consequences and the world is a better place in my own tiny little way. It's kind of cool. It's why I do this. It's why I open every talk I do up to Q&A. Because if I do that, you learn to ask questions of people in leadership positions. You get to ask questions and demand evidence. And if you do that, you start doing it other places. That's when elections get more fun. Go. Um, how difficult was it to overcome the skepticism that you undoubtedly encountered in the beginning? I think it's cute that you think I've overcome it yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been doing this 21 years. We started in 1994. We have 25,000 members across 160 countries, and we have 12 million hits on YouTube. And when my dad calls me this Sunday, he's still going to ask when I'm going to get a real job. <laughs> but what was it like back in that very first year? Um, that very first year was a dorm room at Grand Valley that had like 50 computers packed in it and we were living on bagels and ramen noodles and it was weird because I'm a nerd and I like making stuff and as, as, a, as a kid hanging out at college I learned that if I made a really cool project and I went out with my weirdo friends and we showed it off, we always got a crowd. It just happened. You just, they just show up. We weren't trying to get a crowd, we just wanted to play with our giant air-powered cart or whatever. And people show up, so you end up, instead of just going out and playing with it, you're explaining it. Well, we did this on a bicycle wheels, and you know, that's with a rope, and, and, and it was cool. And we're like, hey, people like this stuff. Well, as an engineering nerd, you don't get a lot of friends. You especially don't get a lot of girls. So if you start getting a crowd, you start getting girls. And if you find a way to bridge that gap from engineering to Get girls. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a hard one to cross, man. And it just grew. And more people wanted to come and build stuff. And then I learned that it's really common. And it's not the people you think. It's, it's the people that don't have the engineering background. It's, it's normal, everyday people. And once they figure out, I can make things? Yes! And most people have... And a lot, for a lot of people, it's buried deep. But most people have a sincere, passionate desire to learn, to figure out how things work. And there are people that don't. There are people for whom an automobile is a magical box that you put oil in one end and gas in the other, and you never have to get an oil change because it still runs. <laughs> Which I view as kind of like, how could I be out of money? I still have checks left. You know, and just, eh. <laughs> so for those people, I can't help them. OK. Cool. I can help all the rest. And that's why I do this. Next question. Go. Would you be able to help me put a Fables, Mr. Fables gumball machine back together? God, yeah. yes. Okay, I can't tell you how I got it because it's being filmed. <laughs> 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 Just say it. I, I understand that. I was, I was showing, I, I, have, I have a parking meter. You know, like the, put a quarter in. And, and I had a friend of mine ask me, How'd you get that? And it's like, you ever see the beginning of Cool Hand Luke? Yeah. <laughs> and I just left it at that. So yeah, I can help you put that back together. Right. I can also help you to re-key the lock so that you have a key for it that works. Yeah. yeah. Next. Go. A um, couple things. None of this brainstorming actually happens during a nine to five day. What, what are the hours that people can go in and work this? Pro B member hours, like you're new, are from 10.30 in the morning till like 7, 8 o'clock at night. Okay. Once you're past being a Pro B member, which is basically, we understand that you're not a Muppet and we can trust you with power tools, it's 24-7. 
It is. Yeah, if you came there tonight at midnight, there's people working on projects. And I'll probably be one of them. I, I can tell you firsthand, I have a daughter that's in high school and then having had two that have gone through. Right now the big focus is college. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how they will not tech, don't go technical. Go to college. And and the trades are huge and people are starting to ignore that. It scares me. You know, Work like became saying, a dirty word. Yeah. But I mean, you know, to become a plumber or an electrician or, you know, HVAC, that's it's it's a noble trade, but they're it is. not they're not pushing it anymore. No, and if we don't push people into this, if we don't open this as a yeah, valid right, path to people, if we don't teach people that there is honor in doing a day's work, then we lose infrastructure. But the, I mean, what they're being taught is, if you don't have a degree, then you're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. Else, which is. BS. And people come to our building to get an education, not a degree. Okay. Okay. By the way, for reference, today, a well-trained high-end welder, just a welder, okay, not a brain surgeon, a welder, makes about 150 grand a year. Wow. So, yeah, it's not bad work if you can get it. Diesel mechanics, that's a, yeah. that's a huge field. Somebody had a question. Go. Yeah, could you help me find a, my carburetor on my car? I, I can't seem to find it right now. <laughs> you know, How old is your car? The technology has changed yeah. so much that... You know, when I was growing up, I could do a lot of things on my car. You still can. Okay, but you don't have to. Yeah, but you have to have s some tools. That's what he's got. I got them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the average person. Yeah, can't do it the enough. average right. person can't. And because the biggest problem I run into with guys in your generation is that they're scared of it. They're, I don't know anything about those computers. Well, it's about damn time you learn that. Let's go. And, and I will, there isn't a person in this room that I won't give you a laptop. If you don't have a computer, if you've never used a computer, if you're scared of learning this stuff, I'll give you one. No more. I want to I'll give you a computer. Let's play with it. Let's just because it's not hard. It really isn't. Is there an age? You can do it. Is there an age? No. 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 Um, if they're under 16, because I have five insurance companies and a lot of lawyers, if they're under 16, we got a real simple rule. You got to be able to reach out and grab them by the neck. They got to be that close to you. Because if they're not, the entire world is dumbed down and nerf edges and super safe because we have to protect the wee precious children. I believe that if he's smart enough to use a power tool, he's smart enough to realize drilling a hole through your hand is going to result in a bad day. I believe that stupid hurts. And because of that, we don't dumb it down. We don't put nerf edges on stuff. I have a building full of things that will kill you the moment you don't respect them. Because that's how the real world works. I don't want to teach him that he can't be trusted with responsibility. I want to teach him that there are dangerous things in the world and don't put your hand in the table saw. So that's how it works. And here's where it gets really weird because you haven't seen this happen in 20 years. I'm going to trust you to actually be a parent and be responsible for your own kid. <laughs> That's How about that for a radical concept? I think Mike Rowe has probably done more for the working man. Yes, Mike Rowe's a hero on this planet at this time. Yep, because he made working with your hands honorable. Yes, and I'm I'm in the same camp as Mike. I he, I I love Mike Rowe beds. Go. What about the the, the mentoring? Um, what kind of resources are there for mentoring? A lot. Um, there is. Nothing on earth that you can walk in the door and say, I want to build this or I want to learn about this, anything with science and technology, that we don't have some kind of resource for. Um, this includes a several hundred person think tank that exists online that you can talk to in real time. There's 180 cameras in our building. If you, if you can see our building, it can see you. And there are lots and lots of people all around the world who hang out in a computer chat room. They're all over the world. And if you... Sit down at any terminal or building and just ask a question. And sometimes you don't even have to type it. They can help. They may not know the exact answer. Savior is not in my job description. I'm not a god. I don't have all the answers. But I know where to find them. Or at least I know where to find the people who know. And that's what we bring. We don't do the work for you. You can come here and build anything you want. I'm not going to build it for you. My job is to just keep you on the path. And preferably not let you kill yourself. How many employees do you have? Uh, 
Full-time employees, about 15. Part-time and volunteer, it goes out to about 40, 50. And that's globally. Um, like the, the person who switches our live stream is in England. And you know, one of our head computer people is in Australia because it's the 21st century. We can be anywhere in the world. Every time you hear that gunshot sound, that's, that's fan mail in my pocket because I have a magic computer in my pocket. It just, I can office anywhere. Go ahead. How did you make the connect, these worldwide connections? Or how do they find you? That internet thing, man. It's on computers now. All the cool kids are doing it. <laughs> I got that much. <laughs> I'm just curious how those relationships got it, en enduring relationships got and established. And they are. It's, it's not how you maintain It just them. happened organically. It just, we, I realized early on that normal people don't throw 20 foot lightning bolts across the room as part of their day job. I do. My specialty is high voltage high energy physics. And I started making little videos of this is what I did today. And I put that on the internet. And a thousand people watch it by the next morning. And these people start emailing me and commenting, and they want to get involved, and they want to be a part of it. And it just grew from there. And if you walk in our main lab today, you, you look up at the ceiling, and it's covered in flags. Just standard three foot by five foot flags, countries all over the world. We've never bought a flag. I just got on camera one day and said, hey, everybody send me in a flag from whatever country you're from. And they started, like, UPS trucks full of flags started showing. And we're like, wow, OK. <laughs> I should dress nicer. <laughs> so, yeah. Next. So is there a cost? Like, you, it's 20 bucks a month. Thank you. And do you sign up for a contract yeah, you, for a year? You have what, to quite you? literally sign your life away. Right. We have a waiver that it's three, it's, it's three documents. One is a strict release of liability, which says if you try to fix your headache with a nail gun, you can't sue me for that. Um, it, it basically says, don't be an idiot, and in exchange for you not being an idiot, I will let you play with all the power tools you want, but if you chop your fingers off, okay, because lawyers. The second thing is actually a model release that says, I can take your picture and put it on the internet because there's 180 cameras in the video. So, yeah. And the third thing is a backwards non-disclosure agreement. If you came up with a billion dollar idea today, and you come into the building, and you build your idea, you go out and sell billions of dollars of this. You don't owe me anything. It's your idea. You paid your 20 bucks, man. I, I get nothing. Remember us come tax time. Yeah. But, but you don't owe me, like I don't own 10% of your company or anything like that. But what's really cool is if you came in out there in the normal world, the way everybody's used to it, the world works like, this is my idea, and it's mine, and I'm going to build it, I'm going to make all the money, ah! Well, I'm not a god, I don't know everything. So, you can come into the building with your idea, and not have to be a god, because you can talk to him, and he can help you build your thing, and he can't steal your idea. And that's the, uh, that's the whole point behind it, is that you can share your ideas in our environment, you can develop things, and people can't steal your stuff. So those three documents protect everybody. So if I, if I went down there, am I signing up a year contract? No, pay one month. You can, you can sign up for time. one day. You can get a day pass for five bucks just to check it out and see what it's like. Um, we do a full public tour every Saturday at 12.30 in the afternoon. Don't be late. But we do, it's a tour of the whole, every room in the building. And at the end of it, I do this. I, I do a Q&A where you get to ask any questions you want. You dropped your point. Oh! I'm going to need those. Hey, I'm, 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 there's a raffle. I'm in. Um, when, when it comes comes to doing projects, obviously you can't, don't necessarily get it done right away. What do you do for, like, storage? We can help you out with storage space. And we can also do things like if you need uh, a semi-trailer full of plywood, you can't get that to your house. We have a forklift and a loading dock and all that, so you can have it delivered to us and we can set it aside and we can help with that. So like if I were to want to restore an old car? You can put it in a parking lot, but there's a per day charge. Okay. It's not like $100 a day or anything ridiculous right, right. like that, but we charge you a couple bucks because I don't want 50 people clogging our parking lot with old DeSotos. And I can, I, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily you laugh, there's a, there's a fire truck in our parking lot right now, which by the way is pretty awesome. If you ever have the desire to play with a fire truck, come on by. We have one. Next. 
This is fun. I can do this all day. Go. Did you start this or did yes. you hitchhike? It's my fault. It's your. I'm sorry. You said there was other locations. Where, where are the other? Locations? We're building one in Ludington right now. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. I've got a woman, an awesome woman, who is working to start a chapter in Ludington, and uh, that's that's our newest one. Like I had a meeting with her yesterday. Do you find yourself gravitating towards like? Uh, Tech universities? No, or, or anywhere that, it, if you want to build a chapter, get a dozen guys meeting once a week and I'll help you build a chapter. Okay. We're just starting to reach out to chapter creation, but we have chapters all over the world. Uh, Western Massachusetts, uh, Perth, Australia, all over the world. <coughs> Next! And then like the, uh, the CNC machines and, and all that stuff, was that acquired by donation? Mm -hmm. They donate them. In fact, right now we're swapping out our main, our big main CNC machines because we get them on a, a two-year entrustment, okay. and then they take them back, and we get new ones. Okay. Um, and now we're changing companies. We're going to we're not going to have CNC machines with training wheels on them anymore. It's kind of like that. We've had Haas for years, and we're growing to a oh, for serious CNC equipment. It's pretty cool. Okay, but like okay, I inherited a bunch of machinist tools. And it's the old, you know, like Starrett, fifteen, yeah, fifties, sixties era. It still works. Um, that is something that you would teach these people, or yeah, if you want to learn how to use them, bring them. If you want to donate no, them, bring them, and we'll teach other people how to use them. Okay. But we don't teach sixties technology. We teach like the the same fundamental stuff of learning how to read a set of calipers and stuff like that. It's it's same same. But you can apply that to modern stuff, which is nice. But the older tools still have a use. Okay. It's, it's, it happens where we'll get stuff on occasion where it's like, okay, we're not going to do anything with that. And then it gets sold at surplus. We put it on eBay and the money goes to help pay the light bill, stuff like that. Okay. So, yeah, it, it all ends up doing good somehow. You got board name with the local schools like um, Community College. Oh, God, yes. In fact, I had a, CCC, uh, a GRCC group come through yesterday. Because they're very much involved with like the yes. CNC. Quite a bit. Um, we had a group of 16 people come through from GRCC yesterday. Eight of them signed up for membership before they left. <laughs> so that that kind of tells you our involvement with GRCC and stuff. But we get we have members from all the local colleges. Um, we do school groups. We have kids his age come through. We have Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, church groups, youth groups, all that jazz. And they come down and we'll do like a one hour show. Uh, we do a lot where teachers will come in and say, like, I have 60 kids and we're in the fifth grade, we're doing electricity and magnetism, and I'll spend an hour throwing lightning across the room for these kids and doing explosions. Because we can do the stuff they can't do in their home school because insurance won't allow it. They come to our place for fire and explosions and, and all the fun stuff they won't let them play with. And if any of you want to experience the joy of getting to genuinely blow something up, come on down. We have an impulse generator that generates 144 million watts of power, and I will let any one of you who ask push the big red button of science. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, to put that in perspective, when our impulse generator goes off, more energy goes through that system for three thousandths of a second than every building in the entire greater Grand Rapids area is using at that moment combined. So it's pretty cool. Well, I made awesome. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nerd. <laughs> Next question. Very cool. All right. Now, I've said a lot and I've explained a lot, and it's really hard to explain this place to your friends. So what I'm going to do is leave a stack of flyers. This is how you explain the geek group in ten seconds. Just hand this. To your kids, your grandkids, your friends, your neighbors, whatever. I'll leave a whole stack of them up here, and you can take as many as you want. If you need more, you can get a hold of me through the member handbook. I'm, I'll give you as many of these as you want. The, I have a very strange request of all of you. And you never hear this of anybody who stands up in front and talks to a crowd while wearing a suit. Okay. I would like all of you, please, to tell everyone you know the absolute truth about what I do, about the geek group. I don't want you to spin it. I don't want you to try to put a shine on it. Just tell them the absolute truth of everything I said. We are not here to win popularity contests. There's a whole lot of people that get very offended when you start talking about science. I'm OK with that. Let them hate me. This is how we make the world a better place. This is a way that you can tangibly make the world a better place. Because if you get this in the hands of the right person, like him, and they grow up to be an engineer, you don't know that that isn't the guy who's going to invent the next big awesome thing that gives us free energy for the whole world. 
And my biggest fear, the thing that keeps me up every night, is somewhere the greatest invention ever is stuck in the head of somebody who doesn't have access to the ability to express that. So that's what we're here to do. So thank you guys for having me. All right. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, very much. You don't have enough yes. energy. No. Somebody was in their junior, senior year in school, and they really didn't care to go on to college, but they wanted to do this. They totally can. Can, can they just come down there yeah. and visit? We're not a replacement for college, but college is a requirement to be in. Anybody can come. <laughs> but they could go and they <coughs> and things. You could come down <coughs> and figure out a new way to like shoot donuts. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have known. You ask her, this exists. There's a thing <coughs> where you put all the dough in a hopper, and it's on an arm, and, and the, the hopper hangs out over the deep fryer, <coughs> and you turn a crank, and it poops donuts. Every time you turn a crank, it poops a donut. This is the coolest thing ever. She's probably got five of them. I want you to make for three hours. <laughs> and I got fired. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you know, I have to I have to I have because there's another machine. It has a bit, two big hoppers on top, and you put, you know the cream filling in a long john? Or a jelly donut? Well, you put custard in one, you put jelly in the other, and it's got two little sticks out the front, and like big giant needles. And you stick the long john on the inner, and it fills up the long john. You do not leave me alone at 3 o'clock in the morning with a machine that shoots cream filling. I got fired in three hours. <laughs> huh? What did you put in the I didn't put it in it. I just wanted to see how far I could make it shoot. Turns out you can make it shoot all the way to the deep fryer. <laughs> yeah, you would have got fired. You, <laughs> you put five pounds of cream filling into the deep fryer and you don't have a job. I didn't even get paid for those three hours. <laughs> that man said questionable things about my parents. <laughs> you had a question? Me? Yeah, somebody no, 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 no. Okay. Anything else? You guys cool? Yeah. All right. What you do? I think it's wonderful. Come down, check it out. It's fun. There's explosions. Yeah, there's what more could you want? Out there, you can change their life. That's great. That's what we're here for. And all of you can come down and tinker and play and work on your car or do whatever the hell you want. What day is the open house again? Uh, the, well, the the full tour is every Saturday. It happens every Saturday at 12:30 in the afternoon. And we mentioned it in there. Okay. So, and these aren't like promo flyer materials. These are actual member handbooks. This is the new version. It just came out. That's why these are just stapled on the edge instead of being like glossy and professional. We we made these this morning. So you guys are some of the first people to ever see them. You get. I listened to the news this morning. You get a couple of recruits up in Ludington to have a silly string fight in the Walmart. Then they decided they didn't want to clean up or didn't want to help or pay for it. So trouble for them. They got new friends in the Mason County Jail now. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Actions have consequences, <laughs> and stupid people make bad decisions. Yeah. I built a whole nonprofit organization, and, and most people in my job that are like the president of a nonprofit tend to be warm, fuzzy, you know, everybody come. Yeah. That's not me. That's, that's not what the world needs. The world needs to know that not everybody needs a pat on the back. Some people need a boot in the ass. Yeah. And, 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 and I built this place to make smarter people because stupid people terrify me. Which is kind of like saying, I became a vegetarian because I hate plants. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's kind of weird like that. Um, is there anything else I can do to help you guys? Oh, cool. Thank you very much. How do I find out if I won the raffle thing? We have to draw right away. We'll draw right away. Oh, so it happens. Just leave your tickets. We'll call you. Okay. It's <laughs> like nobody took my phone number. Anymore, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it. We'll let your assistant draw. I wouldn't trust her. <laughs> I check her pockets before we go. Five bucks if she's got silverware. Not ours. We don't care. <laughs> Three of these are yours, by the way. I bought these, these three are yours. These three are mine. Okay, okay. six five two. Yes. Five six five six. That's me. Yeah. Okay. Cool. My ticket's defective. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just can't come here. Stupid. <laughs> these three are still yours. <laughs> Thank you guys for having us out. You are awesome. Everything you need, I'm here. Thank you. Bottom center. Hello guys, I'm Chris Bowden.
welcome to the Geek Group. It's 1400 hours on Third. Wednesday, February 3rd, 2016. I'm drunk. It's my official viewer mail drum now. Alright, I got a package. It's for Paul! Well, you saw you're beaten to the Is day. it Mulcher, Malker? What? Mulcher. Close huh? enough. Mulcher? Yeah. Okay. Not easy to pronounce. Call me a dog. <laughs> Who am I kicking today? I don't know. It has an interesting aroma to it. Mm. Oh, I know what it is. You know what it is. So. It's labeled kick ass! So it's gotta be for Paul. <laughs> yep, I know who I'm selling it to. It's not. a double dissipation R7850. It's a video card? Yep, exactly. What's the story? Uh, a friend of mine from the UK, he upgraded his computer, spent ridiculous amounts of money, and, and said, do I want the video card? And I said, yeah. So I sent it to him. Cool. Enjoy yourself, sir. Since you guys are apparently incapable of keeping track of screws while working on projects, I have a technological solution to your problem. Jay, thank you Jay, they're parts trays, magnetic parts trays, and they're nice Cool! That's actually damn handy. See that those get dispersed among workbenches in the MDH. Okay. Put one in a high voltage lab. I'm still one for my project. Huh? I said we still want from our project today. As long as you put it in the tour room when you're done. Okay. Everybody's a critic. <laughs> and one of the nice ones. And enough notes to wallpaper a small room. Saw you using cans the hard way. It was hurting my fingers. I said three styles. Choose your favorite. But you're not going to tell me who you are. Why don't you tell me who you are? All right, so we've got this one, which is the 3M Paint Defender. Auto Advanced Comfort Grip makes spraying easier. Okay, I've never tried one of these, but I'll give it a shot. This is... A totally different label on the exact same thing. Absolutely did not come out of the same factory in China at all. And then there's this one, which is the big rust -oleum one. If somebody would make one of these out of metal and that actually worked, I'd be more interested. I've tried these before and I've never I've never found one that I really like. I'm I come at spray painting from the world of model making. Like I make a lot of models. And I just you get a touch for it and you get it's it's a deeply personal thing. So when you when, this here's a way that I can explain it that'll make sense to you. This to me feels like like uh, uh, power steering. Okay, I, I like I like this feel of being in control and the interaction with the machine, with the paint can, with the air gun, whatever. But this adds a layer of cruftiness in between, and it's just I'll try it. I'll give it an honest shot because it might be better. But I haven't found one I like yet. So anonymous person, whoever sent that, thank you. I will try it for you. Ooh, 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 oh wow, cool. I've been wondering what that got here fast. 
Massive H the other day, we were hanging out in the IRC, and I saw a, uh, uh, I was watching EEV blog, and he had a nifty little microscope, and I'd seen the little USB microscopes before, but he had one on a stand, like with a plate and the whole thing, I was like, I want one of those, that, that'd be really cool for autopsies, and it is an Optitech Scope model OTV1, so hi the geek group, enjoy your little microscope thingamabob from Matthew J. Hunt, who is Massive H in the IRC. So it comes with what I'm sure is the greatest code ever written. Some amazing software. And uh, that looks a little medical in there. And uh, well that's wow. That's the actual microscope. So that's the microscope and there's a little button Dingus, which probably turns on the ring light, and all kinds of bits, all the bits. We have things to play, play with. I kind of have the hiccups, so just work with me here. Oh, you turn that and it goes up and down. Okay, I'm with you now. That's, that's how you can focus it. It's pretty badass. And then there's all kinds of tips. Condom even. You can get those nice internal shots. Hey, you're the guy speaking up when I'm talking about microscopic condoms. That's all I'm going to say. You, you were the first one to jump into that. So, you know, man. Whatever works for you. And we've got four different tips black tip, white tip, clear tip, little angly mirror tip. This is cool. So I'm going to put all that. In the bag with this tip and the software. And Paul, it is the job of you and your team to build a nice, like, 400, 410 class laptop specifically just to run this and capture the video in the highest quality you possibly can. I would like the whole thing put on the autopsy set, please, and have once you're done, let Mr. Bellatini know so that he can play with it and. Get it all working the way he wants. All right? Cool. Thank you. And thank you, Massive H. That's really cool. All right. That's viewer mail for the day. Do you have a Sharpie yet? You have no excuse. No one here. All right. Huh? You need one? Oh, you do. Who else needs Sharpies? <laughs> what was that? I was trying to catch something. <laughs> All right, that's Mirror Sorry. Mail for today. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. We'll be back after this. Actually, watch the damn commercial. You don't have to click on nothing. We don't get paid for nothing. But you need to know about Quinn's. Because I'm trying to get more people hanging out with Quinn because he's a good guy and he wants to be making your e-juice. We'll be back. Quinn's Vape Supply is your source for high-quality e-cig products. At Quince, Quince, you'll find over 80 different flavors of e-liquids, from exotic fruit flavors to traditional tobacco flavors, and everything, everything in between. between. There's an e-liquid for everyone. Quince, Quince is also the exclusive supplier of the Chris Bowden, Bowden Signature, Signature series. series. Not sure which flavor's for you? Check out one of the Flavor, flavor Flights for a sampling of different flavors. 
All e-liquids have customizable nicotine nic levels ranging from 0 to 24 milligrams, so you can control how much nic nicotine you're vaping. Quinz is an authorized Inakin dealer, and they carry a variety of e-cigs and accessories. Quinz has everything you need to vape exactly how you like. Quinz Vape Supply is exclusively online, and they offer priority mail shipping for all domestic orders. So head on over to QuinzVapeSupply.com. That's Q-U-I-N-N-S VapeSupply.com, and start vaping right today. Time is 1709 hours. I want to give a huge shout out to Talos. Tell Talos how much you love him. I love you, Talos. I love him a lot. Love him a lot. Love Talos, love a lot. Talos has spent like the past five hours nonstop thrashing ass so that um, they could get, all of the office staff could get into QuickBooks at the same time. Uh, it's a little thing, but it's really important. So thank you, Talos. You rock. I also want to give a special thank you out to John Hagen and Sparky, who both got into the Patreon today. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being part of the solution. It helps. It matters. The Patreon guys are a huge, huge help with all kinds of stuff around here. So thank you. So what are you doing next? I'm watching Casey and his graceful machine. Four hours later. Oh, here. oh my god. <laughs> Don't worry, big boy toys are coming soon. You know? This is life support. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. I'm gonna go do my own manner of clusterfuckage. I'm gonna learn how to do upholstery. Oh, yay. What? <laughs> Don't you have, like, important things to I be doing? Didn't Talos just work, like, five hours so you could get into QuickBooks? I need to tell you something. I'll be back.